stay tuned for air gun detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we're going to continue our CO2 summer event, and we're going to take the mystery out of the brand new Smith & Wesson Model 29. This is one gorgeous pistol. But before we get into that, do me a favor if you hadn't, please hit that subscribe button down below there. It does not cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps out the channel. And when you have time, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. We sell a variety of different t-shirts. I just got some hats that are just came in this week, so I'll have those posted really soon. And then occasionally I also liquidate some of my personal air gun inventory. So check that out when you have an opportunity. All right, let's get back to this. This is brand new. This is put out by Umarex. And this is their Smith & Wesson, as I said, Model 29. This pistol became really popular. The genuine one, this is obviously the replica. This is a CO2 version, shoots um, steel BBs. But the real version of this became popular in the 70s. If you guys remember the Dirty Harry series, that's what Clint Eastwood starred in. And his gun in that was a Model 29. Now he carried a six and a half. This one's an eight inch, but he carried a six and a half inch model. The famous Inspector Callahan with the San Francisco PD. He made this gun actually very popular. What was kind of ironic is the original Model 29 in the 70s, it sold for under $200. And then after the Dirty Harry series started, that actually tripled in price. And today, you would actually pay around $1,200 for the gun. They, Smith & Wesson still makes it. They make it in a four and a six and a half inch version. But let's talk about our replica here on hand. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. The finish on this is unbelievable. It's a, it's a blued finish. And then we have a, a chromed trigger here, which is really nice. Gun's heavy, weighs over two pounds. It shoots, as I said before, it shoots 4.5 millimeter or .177 caliber steel BBs. Uh, this has an 8.3 inch barrel. It's a smooth bore barrel. The gun is fully metal with the exception of these grips here. The grips are a polymer or let's just say plastic. Um, this has adjustable rear sights on it. It's got this really nice, and if you can see this, this um, red front blade on it. Let me see if I can turn it around, give you guys a little bit of a sight picture here. So if you can see the little front blade on that, yes, it's pretty gorgeous. The gun actually, they designed this one, it actually has a safety. Normally you push this forward and you open the cylinder, right? Well, if you push this backwards, it's actually a safety and it locks the gun up, which is kind of cool. So then you just to take it off safe, you just push it forward. Now, I've never really heard of a revolver having a safety, but hey, in the air guns, there's nothing wrong with that. This uh, has the Smith & Wesson logo right on here. It also stamped on the barrel here is Smith & Wesson. And then on the other side, it's got the 44 Magnum, because that's what the Model 29 is. The genuine is a 44 Magnum. You guys remember all those lines from the Dirty Harry movie. Anyway, they are claiming that this uh, will shoot 415 feet per second. I personally think it's going to shoot a little harder because of the 8-inch barrel. Um, also, the good part of this is, and I'm going to show you, if you open the cylinder, this takes the regular, the regular Umarex shells. Let me just set this here. We'll display this here for you so you can keep looking at this gorgeous piece. But this takes the regular Umarex BB shells. And the BB shells are identified, they're normally gold. But the good thing about this too, it also takes the pellet shells. And this is the same shells that goes in this Colt, the same exact ones. So they're absolutely interchangeable. So these are pellet shells, the silver ones. So you could actually shoot some pellets out of this and we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. But once again, this works just by Pushing the release forward, you can pop the cylinder out just like that, and you load your shells in. See, there's our pellet shell, went right in there, along with the BB shells. So, very simple, loads just like all the other ones. 
But um, anyway, so you at least you'd have the versatility. I don't really. I'd rather shoot. Put it this way: I'd rather shoot pellets in a smooth bore than shoot BBs in a rifled barrel. So anyway, but let's. Uh, we're going to have to test this thing out. They're claiming you'll get 80 shots per 112 gram CO2. Well, let me show you real quick. This is how you uh, the CO2. I, I have one in here, but you just pop the. Uh, side off and this has your built-in wrench too so you just use the wrench on the bottom you drop your co2 in and you tighten that up very cool because then you don't have to run around searching for a wrench anyway as i said let's see how this is gonna this is gonna perform god the finish on this thing is just beautiful i mean umrex did a really good job on this and uh it's a licensed copy of smith and wesson's model 29 it's a heck of a looking replica but the question is let's see how it performs so let's move on to the next segment all right let's test our smith and wesson model 29 for a little velocity see how well we do so what we're going to do i'm going to shoot five shots with the umrex 5.1 grain zinc bbs and we'll see how well it does um, with the bb so we'll shoot five shots but then in a bonus i'm going to use the silver pellet shells the difference between these are a little bit larger diameter to to accommodate the pellets that's the only difference in the shells but i'm going to go ahead and shoot two variations of pellets and i'll tell you how well those do but first off let's do our five shots with the bbs see what type of velocity we get all right shot number one 483 shot number two 477. All right, shot number three. 473. Shot number four. 472. And we'll give it one more shot. Four seventy eight. That's a pretty good average. Check out that foot pounds of energy as well. Okay, so the pellets again, we use the uh, silver pellet shells. So, how did we do? Well, we tried the match greens just for fun. They're a 5.25 grain alloy pellet, and we averaged 498 feet per second, which gave us uh, 2.92, believe 2.92 foot pounds of energy. So not bad for a little CO2 pistol, that's for sure. And I shouldn't say little, because that gun is not little. The next, we actually tried the RWS, the Diablo Basics. They're a lead pellet, a seven grain lead pellet. And we averaged 435 feet per second. And uh, that would be 2.94 foot pounds of energy. So not too bad. It actually performed quite well with those, uh, those two. So let's move on to our next segment. All right, let's do a little accuracy test on our Smith & Wesson Model 29, see how well it does. We're going to go ahead and we're going to shoot the Umarex, the 5.1 Zinc BBs, same ones we used over the Crony. And we're going to be shooting at, once again, our Splatterburst targets. I want to thank Splatterburst for supplying these with us. They give great visuals as far as impact goes. You guys know where to get those. I'll leave a link down below. But we're going to be shooting the 8-inch targets. And all we're going to want to do is see how well this thing groups. Word of usual, this is our typical air pistol range, which would be 10 meters, 30 feet. Go ahead, take a look. Now let's see how well this does. And what I'm going to do for a bonus for you is I'm going to shoot six rounds with the BBs. Then I'm going to come back and shoot six rounds with the pellet shells just to see how well it does in case you're curious. All right. Remember, we're going for grouping. That's one. That's two. That's three. Four. Five. And one more. We got some wind out here we're contending with too. Six. That's a heck of a group. 
Looks like we had one slight little flyer there, but other than that, this thing grouped really, really well. Really well. Okay, now let's test it with the pellets. Okay, same thing, we'll go ahead and shoot six rounds. We'll see how well it groups. We're gonna try the match greens. These are the 5.25 uh, grain. See how well they group. Little wind we're contending with here. And one more. Another heck of a group. Yeah. This actually did quite well, especially shooting pellets through a smooth bore. But I just did that just to show you guys um, how it would perform. But yeah, it does actually quite well. And the sight there, as you see, we grouped a little low. These are fully adjustable, so I'll just move the sight up a little bit. We'll be right on. So let's uh, stay tuned for the next segment. All right, guys, let's do a quick trigger test on our Model 29. I'm going to test it both in double action and single action. Now. Traditionally, revolvers have pretty heavy trigger pulls, so let's see how well we do here. Got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge. All right, 9 pounds, 14 ounces. 9 pounds, 14 ounces. That's in our double action. Now we're going to try single action. Let's see how well that does. All right. Reset our... Seven pounds, 5.5 ounces. Seven pounds, 5.5 ounces. So kind of like a typical revolver. Doesn't, it's funny, when you shoot this, it doesn't seem as heavy a trigger pull as it is. But like I said, that's what happens when you have a revolver. All right, let's move on to our next segment. All right, let's do a little plinking with our Model 29, see how well we do. We're uh, approximately our 30 feet, 10 meters, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit farther than that. But uh, go ahead and take a quick look. Anyway, you see what we're going to be shooting at. Some small objects up on top, some larger ones on the bottom. I got six shots. Let's see if we can get them off. We don't, we don't. Let's just see how well we do. All right, start with the pellet can on the left. Shotgun shell in the middle. All right, a little red ram. A little white PVC. That was a miss. How about the blue piece there? Let's go back to the little piece of PVC. There we go. The can's a no-brainer. We don't even need to waste our time with that. Anyway, this thing has some pretty good velocity, especially for a CO2 gun. So, anyway, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's wrap this up with our conclusion. The question is, do I feel lucky? Yes, absolutely. I feel lucky that I got to be able to demonstrate and review this pistol. I was really lucky to get a hold of it because I know they're not coming out and it won't be on the market until either the end of August, beginning of September. And they retail for about 150 bucks, 149.99. But let's, uh, let's talk about it. I think it's one amazing CO2 pistol, but like anything else, let's talk about the negatives. And I'm going to scrape hard to come up with negatives on this one, i got to be honest with you. Maybe um, they could offer wood grips for it. See, I told you I was scraping the barrel to come up with negatives, because there just really isn't any negatives on this. But the other thing you ask yourself is you go, oh, why is it in BB, why is it shooting 4.5 millimeter steel BB, why doesn't it shoot pellets? Well, think about this. BBs are really inexpensive to shoot. Very, very inexpensive. So it makes this gun very inexpensive to shoot. You just buy a CO2, you get about 80 shots out of it, and yes, you do get about 80 shots out of it. Anyway, uh, the other option is in the future, all they got to do is add a rifled barrel to this. They already have the pellet shells, and now you have one that shoots pellets. 
And I would highly suggest Umarex does that at some point. Give us the option to have a rifled barrel and be able to shoot lead pellets as well. And then you get the best of both worlds. But let's talk about the positives. First of all, the fit and finish on this thing is unbelievable. It is just absolutely gorgeous. They hit an absolute home run with this thing. Uh, the way this thing feels in your hand, um, just the entire process as far as a replica goes. I mean, they hit a home run with this one. I love the fact that you have this front red blade here. It makes your sight picture really nice. I also like the fact we have fully adjustable rear sights because there's nothing worse when you get a gun that groups but not in the spot that you're aiming. This allows you to do that. So another good thing is it takes these pellet shells, which are awesome. So you have the option of whether you want to shoot pellets or BBs. And you saw it performed really well, almost very similar with uh, either one. So that was pretty, pretty awesome. Another thing I really like about this, you notice, look on the side of this gun very carefully. See on this side? Okay, now let me flip it around for you. You notice anything on this side? What you don't see is the obnoxious warning label. Look how smart they got. They put the warning label on the bottom of the pistol on the grip. You gotta love that. So now you don't have that obnoxious label. That's always been one of my pet peeves. So they hit a home run with that. As far as uh, accuracy goes, this thing was phenomenal. Remember I told you guys before, anything at 30 meters, or 30 feet rather, 10 meters, um, that shoots a BB pistol that shoots under an inch is actually really good. This crushed that. You saw the accuracy on that. It was tremendous. Also, I was absolutely right with this 8-inch barrel. This gun it way exceeded the manufacturer's um, claim of feet per second. They claimed 415 feet per second. Heck, we were just barely under 500 feet per second. And it is not, today is not overly a hot day, it was not overly a cold day, it was low 80s at the time, maybe 81, 82 at the most. So exceptional on that. Again, I'm going to confirm we did get our 80 shots per the CO2, which is great. The other thing I want to talk about is the cool factory. This thing, you know, if you if you grew up watching the Dirty Harry movies or anything about that, and the whole 44 Magnum, the whole persona around that, I, I mean, when I was a kid, I just thought that was just the coolest thing. If you think about it, the Model 29, it's one of the few guns that actually was its own in, own entity. Let's just say that. It was his own entity and became an icon in that movie as the 44 Magnum pistol. As I said in the opening, Dirty Harry actually, that character really put this gun on the map. It really did. So this gun is, you got to remember, this is designed for fun, fun in the backyard. And, you know, to hand this to someone that's uh, not a big air gun shooter that wants to shoot air guns for the first time, just the look on their face is actually pretty surprising because it's, it's definitely impressive just, just looking at it. I mean, this, this thing would look great just in a display case, that's for sure. So remember, this is designed for fun. That's what our CO2 pistols are designed for, a lot of fun. And Umarex, you guys did a tremendous job on this pistol. So how am I going to rate this? Oh, come on. Five stars all the way. This, not to mention the cool factor, is off the chart. So again, I told you this is probably going to be released in late August, early September. And you got to add it to your collection. If you are a revolver shooter, this is a must. Hey, one other pointer I was going to throw out to you guys. And I don't know if you know this. When you're shooting a revolver, your proper trigger finger, you should put the trigger in the crease of your finger. What that does was it compensates for when the um, cylinder rotates. So you're kind of pulling the opposite direction. So it, it makes it easier for you to keep the gun on target. Now, opposite when you're shooting a little semi-automatics, you want to use the pad of your finger. But this, you actually want to use the crease of your finger. That's just a little pointer I thought I would throw out there to you. But yeah, this gun is absolutely terrific. I think uh, if you're at all, like I said, interested in revolvers, you'd be crazy to pass this one up because it's, it's just so impressive. Yeah, am I giddy over it a little bit? Yes, I am. Because I grew up watching Dirty Harry and all those, and the 44 Magnum was just, it, that was just the pistol. And think about all the one-liners that come from that. Yes, 
Do I feel lucky? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I feel lucky to have you watching my Air Gun Detectives episode. So this is going to wrap up another of the uh, CO2 Summer Series. So with that, I hope you and your family are safe and getting a lot of shooting in. So remember, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. So until next time, God bless. Take care.